Yes, he did. But when he recited those surahs in the salah, he was praying by himself at home. He was at home. The narration mentions that Abdullah ibn Abbas went to his house to pray with him. He said, and when the Prophet Sallallahu started to recite for a long period of time, he said, I wish I had never stood alongside him to pray along with him because he couldn't pray. His, le his legs were very weak. You know, he was a kid. The Prophet Sallallahu was married to his aunt, Maymuna. So Ibn Abbas used to go to visit him and go spend the night at his house sometimes. So when he recited Nisa and Ali Imran in the Salat, it was at home by himself. But when you are the Imam of the Masjid and you have people behind you, it's, it's, it's literally, essentially, Something, I'm not going to say haram, but it is definitely something that's khilaf and awla. It is something that is totally be, uh, above the norm to recite long surahs in, in the salat. And people have other business to attend to. Let's say that salat or asa comes in at 4.30. And you just want to come to the masjid and pray because you got to be at your child's school at 5 o'clock to pick them up. And the imam just decides because he's feeling good today, he's going to recite surah to araf, surah number 7, 200 ayats. You know, it's also awesome. And then you're late. You don't get out of the masjid until 5.20, 5.30, and then you got to go pick your child up late from school. You know what I mean? Children start having anxiety attacks when, ch when their parents are late to pick them up from school. Did you know that? Children start having anxiety attacks. Like, where's my parents? They're looking out the window. They're waiting by the door. They're literally having these little hearts of these little kids are literally having panic attacks, looking for their parents, waiting for their parents. Some, some kids. So for some kids, it's the norm, like, like mine's. <laughs> for some kids, it's the norm. You know what I mean? But for some kids, they're not used to their parents being late picking them up. And so they start literally having anxiety attacks. So, you know what I mean? And not only that, sometimes you may get in trouble with the school for coming to pick your children up late. Anything can happen. You know what I mean? So the imam, it's his responsibility to be aware of the environment and aware of the needs of the people and service the people. The imam is not there to service himself. The Imam is there to service the people in the community. He can service himself at home. You can stand up as long as you want at home, but when you are in the masjid, you have to consider the people behind you. No. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah.